Money, girlfriend's hair, the interior of a clean Bentley, the exhaust of a Ferrari. But then there's Sean John Cologne. I don't get it. My next guest is going to explain. Get ready for the real estate show that takes you across the barriers and into the danger zone. That bitchin' real estate podcast with your host, Tenacious T. This is Kimberly Toko, Tenacious T. Welcome back with my very special and, can we say, effervescent in-your-face guest. Thank you. That's a huge introduction. Um, my name is Carl Freund. Yes. And uh, I'm the real estate broker for Kenneth James Realty uh, in Arizona, Colorado, and Florida. I, I hate to say CEO because CEO is kind of just douchey. Yeah, it is a little. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah, I get you. Uh, so those were your favorite smells I highlighted earlier. Yes, they are. Sean, John, Cologne. I wear it. I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> Tell me you can't smell it. I, 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 it I can. I, it does smell delicious. Thank you. Thank but, you, you. but why? It, there has to be a little. There's, there's a reason behind it. Because everybody wears like their favorite cologne, right? Yeah. Yes. But there's something about that where it just, it just, it just smells good. It's just good. So it wasn't. It I was just it on, you're in like the a, department I'm store like and you're throwing it on. on confidence and... every single day. I'm like, like bathing myself in confidence. It's your it signature. It's your yes. signature smell. Absolutely. The other thing that caught my eye was the exhaust of a Ferrari. There's nothing like it. Now, I grew up with a man, my father, that rebuilt 1932 Ford Roadsters with no Arden way. overhead cams. Yes. There is something about the smell of the garage and tinkering, and I get that. But how do you distinguish between the smell of a Ferrari exhaust and a VW? It's very distinct. (laughs) I don't know why it is, but it's it's whether it's the fuel mixture or the catalytic converter or Mm. something about the exhaust. I can smell it, and it's got a very very distinct kind of sour smell to it. So we're going to start a documentary series visiting all of the dealerships and smelling exhaust. It reminded me of a song. I think it's from the 80s. Are you familiar with Thomas Dolby? Weird I think science so, yes. guy. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. He has an album called Aliens Ate My Buick. <laughs> and there's a song on there called The Keys to Her Ferrari. No way. I want you to listen to that I'm and doing report back home. to me. Spotify on the way home. But it is, yeah, The Keys to Her Ferrari, Aliens Ate My Buick. It's Done. right up your alley. Like, hey, actually, go live and show us how you're jamming out to that yes, song. Yes, I'm doing really it. really cool. I'll tag you on Instagram. There's some words that were pivotal to you for 2020 when I asked you for five yes. words. Massive, exponential, branding, marketing, and scary. Yes. I, I think scary, scary and massive kind of go together. Yeah. I really genuinely believe that your goals should be so big they kind of make you nervous. Mm-hmm. Like when you think about them, you start sweating a little bit. You're mm-hmm. like, eh, I don't know if I can do that. That's when the mindset shift happens. It really does. Right. Because what happens is you wind up building systems that are big enough to scale to what your goal is. Yes. Or if not bigger. And then so even if I miss... Right, so like my goal this year is a hundred million. Okay. Uh, I think I can reasonably get that done. And I, I, I look think at me like a, I'm crazy. I, I know. I think it's an amazing goal, yeah. and it's a goal you should have. Yeah. You should overstretch. We just want to know how to make a hundred million as well <laughs> right, right, in yeah. one year. So <laughs> you've you got do, those tidbits. Yeah, you just back out of it and you run the numbers and say, okay, if I need to do this, and this is how many deals I need to have, this is how many leads I need to generate, this is how much you need to spend right. together, and the, the numbers won't lie. Like the numbers right. are the numbers are the numbers. Like you can't fake that, right? So like right. you'll figure out how to build systems big enough to meet your goal or exceed mm-hmm. your goal. Right. And when you get close, move the goalpost. Yeah. Like never meet your goal. Like if I meet my goal at the end of the year, I'm pissed off because I'm like, yeah. I shouldn't have done that. I should have gone bigger. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, so when you said that number, that's what I said. I knew immediately that you yeah. obviously are a visionary. You Thank own you. your own brokerage. You've succeeded. It sounds like from a very difficult childhood. Yeah, without a doubt. But you've blessed with it though. Never stopped. Yeah, for sure. And you've increased your visualization. You're yeah. a manifester. So for if you're sure. sitting there and you have this vision, that's not the first thing that happens though. You don't break it down and, and see how you're going to put that vision in. You had to have been sitting somewhere or the thought went through your head of your vision. Mm-hmm. What is that vision exactly? What what is Carl? Is I really genuinely want to be somebody that helps people on a massive scale and I don't even care if I get paid for it at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, you know, because Mm -hmm. money isn't really, I use money as a benchmark, but it shouldn't be the ultimate goal. And, you know, we've talked about this before where I think a byproduct of helping people is money. 
And so the more people I help, the more successful I'll be. But then I can leverage that again to help more people. Yeah. And my, you know, having health issues and stuff like that and, mm-hmm. you know, realizing that there is an end date. I have an expiration date and that date is probably not that far out. Yes. And you want to help as many people as you can before that. And so it's so important to give back. And people's interests are genuinely, usually misaligned. You yes. Know, they, they mistake having money for being successful. And that's not really the definition of success for me, at least. Right. Does that make sense? No, totally. And so to answer your question very directly... I see myself being a motivator, an educator, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody that can influence a lot of people in a positive way Mm -hmm. to make people realize that there is an end date, you know, to make make people realize that you need to tell people that you you love them and you care for them and have solid relationships and value that more than a stupid Ferrari or, you know, the dumb shit that we wear in our wrists, you know, stupid stuff like that. It makes no difference. When you work for your purpose, your purpose works for you. Yeah, without a doubt. I built my business on giving back because uh, nine years ago I lost my son at 13 to suicide. And I didn't even get into real estate until two years after that. And the only reason why I got into real estate was because I needed to change my family's life, Mm -hmm. Um, sitting there in the sorrow of it all and with my other kids. And it was like I looked around and there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better life. There's got to be pain freedom. Mm -hmm. So I took tenacity. That's all I really had left Mm -hmm. in my family and uh, forced myself through school in 18 days and, you know, got through the testing. And that was my only goal. I was just going to buy the one house for us, change our lives. But when my husband went in the door and I gave him the keys and he had a foundation for his family to heal again, Mm -hmm. I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change lives. I'm going to give back. So I resonate so much to what you're that's saying so now. Powerful. Like I get emotionally choked up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's, that's super intense. Thank you. So very it, proud of you. Oh my you, gosh. You're right. You, there is no guarantee of tomorrow. There's no guarantee that the next second is here. I could drive home and get killed. Yeah. 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 You can only be a victim once. After that, you're a volunteer. That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, you can only be a victim once. We all need that moment to express maybe something that we're going through. But after that, you got to look in the mirror and you got to fix it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No yeah, one's going to sure. do it for you. It, and honestly, let's just be honest. Nobody gives a shit. No. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. like at the end of the day, <laughs> that's true. I'll listen to you, bitch. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be like, <laughs> yeah, that sucks. But um, just go do something. One of the things that I caught in the interview with Brian was that you do spend probably a lot of time on your own, mm-hmm. alone. I think that that's necessary with a visionary absolutely what's really interesting is like my most creative moments always come from when there's silence Mm -hmm. and there's no distraction Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so like if you probably don't know me very well but my ringer's off 100 percent of the day and so i want to get there jealous what's really interesting (laughs) is that (laughs) since i implemented that policy it doesn't control me anymore is that off no i can go back there and check my messages when the time is right for me. Right. You know, and one of the things is that there's never really emergencies. Right. And if there's a true emergency, I'm always with somebody that can be contacted, right. that can tell me like, hey, you got to pick mm-hmm. up the phone. Yes. But since I've done that, so many creative things have happened and so many things have evolved and, and changed mm-hmm. because I can think clearly and I'm not right. distracted 800 times a day. Mm-hmm. Literally, that phone rings 800 times a day. Yeah. One thing, if I can just tell you, just just get out of looking at your phone and just look up and observe Mm-hmm. Just observe the, the yeah. universe. See what's going on. There's so many things going on that we miss because we're dialed in on this stupid little foreign screen yeah. when there's HD right in front of you. Yeah. Right. You know, everything. I yeah. think when someone has been touched by death, right? You, you've you been touched by death. Yeah. You had a legitimate and still do legitimate mm-hmm. challenge and, and scare. I lost my son. There's there's a tweak that happens Instantly in, in in your brain, and oh, you yeah. suddenly realize what the fuck is important. Yeah, yeah, and it happens so quick. And it's not your phone. There's a weird thing, and you experience this. Mm-hmm. There's a weird part, and I have it happen to me, and I know you did, where you mourn for a little bit, and then it hits you. Yeah. It's like you have this overwhelming emotion, and then this overwhelming clarity. I like it's to so call strange. it. Um, for me, and my situation is a little more extreme, that girl, that before girl, she's dead. Yep. I had to find out who she was again. Mm-hmm. I'm a completely different person. I mean, there's my inner soul and all the things that I've always loved, but I am not that person I was then. It changes you. Yeah. Yeah, for the better. Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy to think about. Some of, some of humanity's greatest philanthropic 
moves have been born of its deepest sorrow. Yeah, without a doubt. And I say it's because of the flick of the switch, the awakening. Mm -hmm. What you say comes to life. I always picture when he says it too, there was the old Cleopatra movie with Elizabeth Taylor and so let it be written, so let it be done, the old runner as the Egyptian king. And I 100% believe that. It's the law of attraction. And it's so funny to go back in history, 2,500 years ago, before the Bible, Mm -hmm. it was written down. The law of attraction was there. Wow. And it's so powerful. It really, really is. We're going to have another episode on the law of attraction. (laughs) Can I tell you a very quick story? (laughs) A little book club meeting. Yes, Yes. And so I was at a team meeting, and this is when I first started the brokerage, um, really the team meetings, and we were doing a meeting on Tuesday. And I had everybody verbalize what they wanted, you know, and I had said in that meeting, I want a Rolls Royce. Yeah. I bought my first Rolls Royce two months later, <laughs> yeah. legitimately, and, and not looking for it. I had a guy call me, and he's like, I found a car for you. I think you should come look at it. I think you'll like it. You know, just hey, come you down manifested and take a look at that. It. Yep. And it legitimately came true, like yep. in two activation. months, and not looking for it. Not looking for it. So true. I know that in April of last year, I was sitting at a an event that said, you better get a podcast. And I immediately said, well, it's going to be that bitch in real estate show. And here we are. Right. Yeah, so sure. it's, it's so true. You can literally manifest what you visualize, but not without blood, sweat, and tears. But you know what? It goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Genuinely. So if you start thinking about negative things in your mm-hmm. life, yeah. those negative things come to fruition. Yes. And it's terrifying. You yes. have to be very, very conscious. One of the things that really helped me out with anxiety is... Patience, and it's so weird to think that because we put so much pressure yeah. on ourselves to perform now, okay? Yeah. Not realizing that we've got a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know how much time we have, but have patience. And we we're talking about like the micro speed macro patience. You know, it doesn't need to happen right this second. It's not the worst case scenario. Right. And there's rarely emergencies, rarely. And so, like when you understand, like, hey, wait a minute, everything will be okay. Yeah. It always works itself. Out. Yeah. It always does. It- so you've had. Um- an eye awakening moment in your life. Without a doubt, you have to, yeah. And it seems like you've concentrated more on joy. Without a doubt. Completely different life than two years ago. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about your joy. Well, I stopped um, letting people bring me down. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I would always try to help people that were like a lost cause. Yeah. You know, and I, I've, I said, <laughs> you know what? Like, I'm here for you when your mindset's correct, I will always be here for you. I will always support you. I'll always be your champion. Yes. However, do not put that negative shit on me. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. In in understanding that I need to live life for me too. Yes. You know, and, and there is bigger things than than money and you know, yes. all the other things. Close the things the that deal. give me the most joy, honestly, are experiences, you know, in going out and building relationships mm-hmm. and helping people. That's so much more valuable than yeah. the stupid Ferrari that I drive. We we do so much work inside the organization to really get the mindset right. So we you know, we just did the secret by Rhonda Burns. Mm. You know, we've yeah. done so many of these different books to really get the the mindset to shift and, you know, ask, believe, receive, you know, all yeah. these things. A little that, woo-woo. You're getting a little woo-woo yeah, with your stuff. Yeah, for sure. I love if, it. And, yeah. and if, if you're not in that place yet, I can help mm-hmm. you get to that place. Mm-hmm. And so that's what's valuable to me, you know, and that's what the organization is about. It's really about helping each other up. And right. so when you, when you come to our team meetings, you're going to see real quick, it's a family. It's oddly a family, yeah. you know, like yeah. we all have our dynamic and we all, you know, engage with each other and we all help each other. Yes. And it's so refreshing to see that, but it all starts at the top. Your mindset spills over to everybody in your life. Well, and it's this brokerage, your business is your your baby, yeah, so to speak. I, don't have kids, I so mean, that's my, you know, it yeah. is. <laughs> and and you your heart wants to see it succeed mm-hmm. and be what you envisioned it to be. Past me. Yes. yes. Past you. Yes. Your legacy. It's an infinite mindset. What is your legacy? Really, because that day will come, right? And so I hope that everybody shows up to the funeral and they have a great time. Um, (laughs) Have you written your eulogy yet? I should do that. I should do that. Says to write it. Yeah, Yeah, I'll do do that. And and, you know, I want them to be like that guy helped so many people, Mm -hmm. and he was genuine. He was authentic, you know. And I don't want them to ever think about the material things. Yeah. And I think people see me with pictures of my Rolls Royce, the Ferrari, or the Bentley, whatever it is, and they they get that picture of me. But that's not what it's about at all. Yeah. I saw you know? I saw a cool dude. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, 
I don't yeah. know. But I use those as tools to open up a conversation sure. and get deeper. You know, so it, it is a tool in my toolbox in order to be able to start conversations, and it yeah. really genuinely does, as long as you can quickly shift it from materialistic to something more. An interesting example of that is one of my purposes in continuing to stay in real estate and changing lives is I realized early on that a sad mother who's talking about suicide and the stigma really isn't going to get a lot of attention. However, a sad mother who was able to take that pain and fuel it into extreme success is going to get the attention in order to talk about her purpose. Without a doubt. So, yes, you have to fit the part in order to deliver your message. And that's what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to communicate a thing. You yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And give people the vision too. Because, yeah. you know, I've come from massive, massive failure. You know, where I'm literally, I didn't have a checking account for two years. Like, I don't think people realized. Wow. I overdrew my account <laughs> from Wells Fargo by like 500 bucks. I didn't have the 500 bucks to put back in the account. To right, open so it back they closed up. you down. <laughs> they closed me down. And then I couldn't get an account anywhere else. And yeah. so I literally had to go to like check cashing places for two years yeah. to cash my checks. Mm -hmm. And so like... Coming from that, in, I don't think people realize I slept on floors for two years of my life. Yeah. Not on a mattress on a floor, on the floor. On the floor. The carpet was my bed yeah. and the corner was my dresser. The Count of Monte you know, Cristo. You know, yeah. how many years did he sleep on the floor and he totally. couldn't, you know, he always appreciated that. And so like coming from that, you know, to, to where I'm at today. And I think that's something that you can use as leverage, yeah. you know. And so your stories would resonate with so many people. So when you're... Looking at the man in the mirror you are today, and you think about the person you were then, mm -hmm. do you love them both? Ooh, wow, that's a deep question. Uh, a lot of emotion just came up. I th no, no, I didn't like that person. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if you can say that, yeah, that's the start of mm -hmm. changing, you know. And so realizing what my ambitions were and how they were tied to money versus what they are now, I didn't like that person. Yeah. You know, and it's so interesting to see the evolution because of an event, you know, and that awakening that we talked about. Yeah. You know, and it, I didn't, no, I don't like that person. It was almost two years ago to the day. It was March 12th, 2018. I go into the doctor, to the dermatologist, because I have like a little bit of spot on my back, right? Right. And it was weird. I wear like these white undershirts and I would take them off the end of the day and there'd be like a little bit of blood on there. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And then it went away. And then it started coming back, but it came back way worse. And I'm like, I should probably go get that checked out. And so I go to the dermatologist, and, and I've never seen a doctor just give me that oh shit expression. Uh -huh. And he asked me, he's like, hey, how long have you had that on your back for? And I'm like, I think it's a birthmark, bro. Like, I think it's been there for a minute. And he's yeah. like, uh, that's, that's not a birthmark. That's, I never say this. And we're going to do a biopsy, but that is skin cancer. And he's like... Um, you know, how long has it been bleeding for? I'm like, well, on and off for months. And he's like, uh, that's, that's an issue. And so when he's talking to me, I start to realize that it's, it might be a pretty serious yeah, situation. Uh -huh. So he's like, we're definitely going to have to do an operation on it. You know, we're going to have to figure out what the treatment is for this thing. And, you know, the next stop you're going to make is to your primary care physician. We're going to do a, a, a bunch of labs and you got to go now. Like, I'm going to make the appointment for you because I don't think you understand how serious this is. When it, when, when it gets into your bloodstream is when you have issues, Right. right. You can generally, generally live with skin cancer for a long time um, as long as it doesn't get into your bloodstream, as long as it doesn't tunnel its way down. And at the point where you start bleeding externally is when it's already in your bloodstream. Your lymph nodes pick it up and then you get lymphoma and then you die, uh -huh. right? And so um, go to my primary care physician and, you know, he got me in right away. I, I mean, I was there within half an hour and we did the blood work and he's like, you know, we'll probably get the blood work back tomorrow. So hang tight. I know you're gonna be anxious for a couple hours, but hang tight, you know, we'll get the results back and I'll call you and we'll, we'll go over them. And so I'm driving down I-10 getting ready to head. I lived in Willow at the time and getting ready to get off the I-10 at 7th uh, Ave. And the phone rings. This is the doctor. And he's like, hey, I need you to come back right now. And I'm like, oh shit, here we go. And at that moment, you feel like you're, you're dead. You know, you're like, this is, this is not good. And right. so I do a U-turn I-10, I get down there, and he's like, you know, when we took your blood pressure earlier, it was 180 over 95. Um, and for a 39-year-old guy, that's in genuinely Looks good. good shape, good you know? Shape, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're, that could be a sign that something's wrong. Yeah. And he's like, your diabetes is so far out of control that you can die in my waiting room. And so I'm like... <laughs> I think you screwed up my blood with somebody else. Right. Like, I'm not fat. I don't, right. you know, like, 
I don't this have diabetes. This is the first diabetes. time you've ever even heard that yeah, around you. Diabetes doesn't happen to guys that right. you know are 180 pounds that work right. out five times a week. It just doesn't happen. And so he's like, look, uh, uh, let me grab me a blood meter. I'm going to take your blood sugar right now. And he took it. It was 355. And all these feelings, you know, you feel your mortality for the first time. And that's so, so powerful. On Instagram, yeah, life is beautiful, life is great, you know, there are no challenges, sure. it's just success. And then in reality, you know, it's something completely different. I think that would be very true of me two years ago, or two, let's call it two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. before well, the awakening event, right? And so I'll project success, and I'll project all these things and be a motivator, but my intent was different. Yeah. And my intent has shifted drastically. I think the greatest love affair you can have is with that person in the mirror. It has its ups and downs. But when you can look at that person and say, no matter what, I've loved you all this time, but I'm going to love you even more if you're like this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it, it, it really is tumultuous. You're, you're up and down. But like you said, when you have that awakening and you synergize and use that energy for a purpose, that love builds. It's all about intent. It really, yeah. really is. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could, I, I, there's a bunch of famous questions I'd like to ask. Yeah, let's do um, it. So I took questions from in the actor's studio and I tweaked them to fit the, the real estate world. Cool. So, okay. Thinking of an MLS description, which you probably haven't written them one in a long time, but I, I'm sure you teach them I do, or, yeah. or give some pointers. For sure. What is your favorite descriptive word? Favorite descriptive word? Yes. In real estate? Yes. And if you're, like, you're, typing, if type out, you're typing out what the property is, your favorite descriptive word, oh or maybe gosh. one that you read. Um, that's so difficult. What a great question. <laughs> I really do think it's going to be something that communicates the lifestyle, right? So like, oh, oh my gosh. Cascading I would have to say, counters. <laughs> cascading. <laughs> There's so many cheesy realtor right. words. There really are, you know, expansive, yes. you know, quaint, you know, all those cozy. They're all very useful. They so. are very useful adjectives. And I think, um, if I had to come up with one word, it would be luxurious. Luxurious. You know? Yes. Yeah. Cause everybody deserves a little bit of luxury in their life. I completely agree. hundred yeah. percent. Again, think of a description. Okay. What is your least favorite word? Least favorite? Cozy. <laughs> You know what cozy means. Because I know what that means. It means like closet. <laughs> you know, you're small, buying a, you're buying a closet. Has a funky smell yeah. that gives it that coziness. But yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Or Couldn't potential. Agree more. <laughs> potential. It's got great potential. Lovely. It's a yes. lovely home. Yes. yes. So now I want to take you to kind of an intimate space in sure. your head, right? And you're struggling with health, and mm -hmm. maybe take yourself back to when you were diagnosed with the the, the skin cancer. Mm -hmm. What turns you on in the morning or during the day that keeps you going? What what makes you even get out of bed? It's crazy because I've every single morning I wake up and I have I do have a moment of anxiety mm -hmm. to be fully honest. Mm -hmm. And you know you have that spike of adrenaline instantly, yeah. right? Knowing that today could be the last day. Yeah. Today, this mm -hmm. day could be the last time right I now. wake up. And I have this weird, like almost psychopathic thought when I'm like brushing my teeth or I'm getting ready that somebody is dying at this exact moment. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you appreciate life so much more. And it's crazy. It is like a weird psychosis I have. It's definitely strange. And I've never so, actually verbalized that to anybody. I by love the way. that. Yeah. I love that. And I kind of do that to people. I bring out these little things. Yeah. So opening your eyes. You're grateful for that. 100%. Yeah. I'm like, today's going to be a great day. Yeah. It's going to be, it doesn't matter what happens today. It can be the worst day for somebody, but it's going to be the best day for me. Because you have another day. Yes. It's yeah. one more. I love that. Yep. Same thing. Go in your head. What turns you off? Um, what, Brian and I were talking about earlier, when people um, don't take accountability mm -hmm. and they blame it or everything and everybody, you know, that is such a turnoff to me in that negativity, in that, you know, scarcity mindset. I avoid it like the plague. Like if I see it, I literally would, would shut you off and be like, <laughs> I love you, but I got to yes. go. You yes. Know? Yeah. No excuses, just results. 100%. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. I love that. Yep. So like I said, we bleep these out for the audiences, but it's this next thing. question is one of my favorite. Okay. What is your favorite swear word? Yes. Yeah. Who doesn't? I it's so, so common. 90% of the people use Honestly, the word fuck. it's so multi-purpose, <laughs> yes. you know? <laughs> you can use it in any description, Literally. any description whatsoever. Yeah. 
I like to use it to emphasize certain points, and For it sure. could be something exciting, and it could be something bad, but yep. is my favorite, too. I like it. Everybody likes fuck. Yep. Okay. Now, going back to a personal space, because sure. we went to the fun, and now we're going back to the personal space. What is your favorite noise or sound? Rain. Ah. Oh, yeah. Yep. I've been listening to some meditations at night to, to sleep, and it's ocean yeah. and crackling fire, and I recently found thunderstorm, quiet thunderstorm. Yeah, it's so relaxing. What do you think it is about rain? Is it the water? I know what it is. Or? It, it's, so I think we're genetically programmed that rain means abundance. Oh. Yeah, because things yes, grow. Yes, raining manna. <laughs> yes, things grow and things prosper. You know, like we all need water to, to survive. Yes. And it's, it's a reassuring thing because everything's going to be okay. Yes. Yes. If you even think back to uh, ancient civilizations, they all gravitated towards water. Yeah, you have to. Because it it's, is. essential for life. Essential for life. Yep. And Troy Casey, obviously, he's uh, someone I study. He says that the mist, the light rains, the water, it intensifies the chi in the air. As oh, I 100% well. believe so, that too. Yeah. Yes. Gosh. Okay. So we're going to do another one about dancing in the rain with your girlfriend, Ashley. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, again, this is personal space. What noise or sound you, I'm going to say hate, but maybe dislike, because you and I are the type of people, I don't think we really hate anything after right. you've been awakened, <laughs> but you dislike certain things. Dislike certain things. Um, anything negative, honestly, you know, and it's like, I kind of avoid that very, very, so like whining, whining, complaining, nails on and kind of like, board. yeah, like any of that stuff, <laughs> you know, just like anything that would be kind of disruptive like that'll make you kind of jump or you know because you have no time for that you have no time for that no time nobody's got time for that yeah so let's take real estate off the table let's take yeah. investing off the table mm -hmm. what profession would you have chosen say as a teenager and why I would have chosen public speaker or motivator. Oh, yes. Even as a young yeah, human, without a doubt, totally. Tell me why. So uh, I don't know if you know who Alex Morton is, but I think he's the reason why I'm saying this right now. And so Alex came to me when he was 18 years old, mm -hmm. trying to sell real estate, mm -hmm. and he did very well. Legitimately, he did very, very well. Yeah. As 18, he was still in a ASU. Mm -hmm. He was out there hustling. Mm -hmm. Love it. He was doing rentals. <laughs> he was doing sales. The guy was killing it at 18. Yeah. And we've got two other agents that are 18. We have the youngest agent in Arizona really? on the team. Yes. And so I really, really looked at these guys because, I, you know, hopefully at some small, minute level, I can be a guiding light and push them in mm -hmm. the right direction. Because I didn't have everyone to do that for me. So yeah. it's very important that I do that. Get them, get them pointed in the right direction and go that way. Um, but Alex is such a great public speaker and he's done so many great things for so many people. He found himself um, into network marketing and he's yeah. been so successful. And he, I'm so proud of that guy unbelievable and he's a mentor to so many people and, and brings that positive energy and does those things i wish i could be him so you yeah, it's not so much the actual standing up there and speaking it's being able to impact yes that many audiences. lives at one time and i'm a horrible public speaker for those that really seen. yeah I feel now like i'm, I'm not super very curious i'm gonna have to yeah, let's organize you're welcome event. to come to any of my yes. presentations yes. <laughs> i'd love that we'll work on that we'll get sure. you all rock and rolling in leather cool. and then maybe you know. let's do it yeah. um so let's take a famous person, okay. dead or alive. If you could have dinner with them, ooh wow, who would it be and why? It would be President Obama. Ooh, ooh, I like this. It would, and I've thought about this a lot. Um, and I think he's such an interesting man because yes. he's had to overcome massive stereotypes, mm -hmm. and he's had, had to overcome so many, so much criticism, harsh criticism, and he's done it with from grace. everybody, and he never has a bad day. Yeah, he's done it with grace. I've never seen him not smiling. Right. You know, I mean, he's had somber moments of mm -hmm. reflection. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the guy is truly incredible. And politics aside, you right. know, like, right. not that I agree with everything he says or has done. But the I don't know, you cannot himself. not respect that guy. Yep. Legitimately. Yep. Like, he's had to do so many things. And you talked earlier about the people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. I think for Obama, his core, his wife... No, oh, Michelle's amazing. His family. Woman. Yes. He's never lost sight of what's important. Right. The flick of the switch. Yeah. The he's awakening. a family guy too. Yeah. 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 That in itself, I think, is the key to success. Yeah, for is, sure. Is who is in your heart? Who is your core? Yep. Do they believe in you? Mm hmm And if they don't, then you need to get rid of them out yeah, the door. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Pro tip, surround yourself with good people. I love that. I yep. love that. 
thank you so much for coming on the Thanks show Thanks for today. having me. Kimberly Toko, Tenacious T. Carl Freund. Out. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, that's so much. If you need me to change, then I'm gone. I've been on the fence for too long. I'ma do me. You can try to talk like I am not living my best life. If you want